Orders of the day. Ballot item number nine, second reading of Bill 183, an act to amend the Ombudsman Act and the Police Services Act with respect to investigating designated public bodies. Mr. Marchese. Mr. Marchese. Uh, second reading of Bill 183, an act to amend the Ombudsman Act and the Police Services Act with respect to investigating designated public bodies. Mr. Marchese moves second reading of Bill 183, an act to amend the Ombudsman Act and the Police Services Act with respect to investigating designated public bodies. Pursuant to standing order 98, the Honourable Member has 12 minutes for his presentation. Mr. Marchese. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Here's what we want to do with this bill today. We want to expand the mandate of the Ombudsman so that he can do more to protect Ontarians. That's what the objective of Bill 183 is. And I want to thank uh, the many people that came today because they spent a whole day here. And some of them are facing me. Most of them actually are facing me. I thought they were going to go there so that they could face you. Uh, <laughs> but most of them are behind you. And uh, some of them are there. And a few are here. And there. It's a. And, and uh, <laughs> some over there. They spent the whole day here. This speaks to the incredible pain that many of them have experienced with one institution or another, whether it be children's aid, hospital, a long-term care facility, or a school board issue, or even a matter that's uh, related to the, the uh, area, and I don't think many of those are here, related to the Independent Police Review uh, Director. But when you spend a whole day to come to a press conference in the morning, come to hear the question that we asked around uh, 11 o'clock, and stick around until 3.30, 3.40, and we are all live. That uh, speaks to the immense uh, uh, pain they experience and the desire they have <coughs> to have the Ombudsman come in and shine a light on problems that they believe, and I do too, on the various entities around which we spend billions of dollars and uh, we have no oversight over these bodies. The government might claim that they have oversight in one form or another, but these people know there is no oversight. There is no independent oversight of these institutions. And that's what we're calling for. We are calling for an ombudsman who has the investigative powers, the independence and the experience to identify, to investigate, to identify problems make recommendations to resolve them, and then wait for the government to fix the problems. We have been waiting for a premier who has the resolve and the strength to say, if there are problems in these institutions, I want to know what they are. And then I'm going to fix them. And I'm going to send the ombudsman in to do his review and wait for his uh, resolutions. But the government, each and every time, has refused to do that. I don't understand why. It, it, it can't be for lack of money. Why, when you, when you look at every other province that has these, uh, th this, this power, you say to yourself, well, how can the Yukon do most of this? Sure, surely we're a bit wealthier than the Yukon. Uh, in the short term, uh, until they discover more and more minerals and oil and, uh, and gold, uh, who knows, maybe they'll get wealthier up there. Nova Scotia, Newfoundland and Labrador, New Brunswick, Quebec, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, British Columbia. Most of these provinces have ombudsman oversight over all of these institutions that I mentioned, including in many provinces, municipalities, including in municipalities, universities as well which is part of my bill. If all the other provinces can do it, why is it that Ontario, so powerful in so many ways, so wealthy, still relative to, can find the, the will 
to do it. There is no downside. There is absolutely no downside. I understand that you as a government feel you would look bad, as you have been, every time the Ombudsman has gone in, investigated something, and has forced you in a position to actually do something. But you can get ahead of the game. You can say, I want the Ombudsman to go in. And I want him to bring back his recommendations, because I want to solve the problem. That's what you could do. And until you do that, of course you're going to be afraid of having the Ombudsman go into a hospital, reveal individual and or systemic problems, because then you're going to look bad. Be bold. Be a leader from time to time, for God's sake. Do something. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> very politely. We're very pleased to have you at Queen's Park today, but we do have a very strict rule that you're uh, allowed to watch the debate but not participate in it, and that includes clapping. Thank you. Those are rules. We, uh, we spend billions of dollars. We spend $17 billion to, uh, to fund our hospital. $17 billion. We spend another seven or eight billion for universities, uh, includes colleges to be fair too. But we, and, and for our elementary school system, we spend 16 billion dollars as well. We spend billions, long-term care facilities. And yet, we don't have any significant oversight over these areas. In healthcare, if there is substandard care, if somebody dies, and we, ha we had a deputy today whose father died, something that could easily have been resolved. And you have individuals fighting it out on their own, trying to, to, to investigate a problem on their own. You got people here that have suffered through children's aid societies, fighting on their own to resolve a problem, that, an unjust problem that they feel that, that, is, that should be legitimately dealt with by somebody who has the power to deal with it, yet they on their own have to find the resources the money to hire lawyers to solve the problem because they can't go anywhere to get that problem solved. The Ombudsman said families can be broken apart needlessly or children can be deprived of stable foster care or adoptions can fail or at times children can suffer abuse or even die, said Monsieur Marin. We have kids in our school system that are falling through the cracks. They need special education, not getting it. And those kids suffer on their own, and those families suffer on their own. Because we don't have a government any longer that feels they have an obligation to take care of them all. Because why? It costs money. It does cost money. But in the meantime, we leave them on their own to fend for themselves. We got kids who are bullied, some of them sexually abused. And I've heard of some of those cases, and you would think that the trustees would be there to help, or the principals would be there to help. And in many cases they are there, and sometimes they fail, the, they fail those parents and they fail those kids. We need an ombudsman. Parents don't know where to turn to. They're alone. And there's thousands of people who feel they're on their own when they got a problem. They don't know where to turn to. Some of us feel that they know where to go and they know who to turn to for help. Most of them don't know what to do or who to go to for help. The only person they could go to is an ombudsman. And we'll hear from the liberal very soon, because I'm sure he's got other suggestions. That's the only person they can go to. Because if they go to the liberal MPP, mm, I don't know what you're going to get. I don't know what you're going to get. The member from La London Fanshawe says, good service, God bless, he'll be speaking shortly because he's a good soldier for the Liberal Party and he'll be speaking on this, I know it. <laughs> but, sorry, when there is a problem, either in a hospital or a school related to abuse or, or special ed, what the, ember, the members will do is refer them back to somebody else if it's a school issue, they'll say, go to, go to the trustee or go to the principal. If it's a hospital issue, they, they might even write a letter, God bless, or they might say simply, it's beyond us, I don't know. 
If it's related to university, they might say, go, go, go to you. I don't know where they would send you. I have no idea where they would send you. If it's a, a children's aid society, they will, they'll, they'll, they'll tell you that uh, uh, there, there is an association that, uh, my goodness, what's the name of the organization that uh, will deal with it? Because the minister made reference to it. The, the, uh, the uh, Family Services Review Board, uh, uh, which, which is supposed to have oversight, and the Superior Court of Justice just made a decision stating that this Family Service Review Board does not have the power to hear certain CAS complaints and has so far been forced to put 50 hearings on nice. I don't know, going to the, your Liberal MPP, was that going to get you? I really don't. We need to be able to go somewhere and feel that when we state our case, somebody will hear. And we need to validate the pain that people are experiencing. And we don't validate that pain by saying, we're, we're, we're taking care of things, we're doing, we have systems in place, because we don't. We do not have the systems in place, and I argue, it's time to let the ombudsman in. There is absolutely no downside. If other provinces in Canada, including the, the Yukon can do it, so can Ontario, it's time. And the amount of money that people spend on their own, and the amount of money that organizations spend to defend themselves against the complaints that people have, if all that money got directed to help the ombudsman, just a little, with a few, few dollars, he could do this job, no problem. He's been doing an, ama an amazing job with the, with the resources he's got now. With just a few of those lawyer uh, fees that, that boards spend to defend themselves, and hospitals, with all that, those dollars they use uh, to, to defend themselves, if all that money could just be funneled, just a little bit funneled, to go to the ombudsman office, we'd have no problem. He would have no problem doing this job. The time has come. We can't put this off. And we need to, I, I suspect this bill is going to pass. I, I really do. And it's going to go to committee. Wherein it will die unless we push them and unless we push the Premier to say, if this bill passes today, we want you to deal with it in this session. We got a couple of weeks, we got two or three weeks left. And we're going to have to push, push the Premier to make sure once this bill is passed in this legislature that they then deal with it in committee. And that's what I ask you, those of you who have come, to do. And then we push the Liberals to make sure that happens. Thank you.